Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. If you're new here, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to be diving into the Turbo iOS demo project just to explore more of how Turbo iOS works and to get into the details of the different features. So I hope you guys are excited and let's get right into the video. So why don't we start by downloading the demo app? That's probably a good start. Right to here, I'll just do a git clone, turbo iOS, and then we should be able to open the demo too and try it out. So to do this, I'm gonna open up Xcode and then we're going to open existing projects and I'm gonna go and open the demo. So I guess we'll just click on the Xcode proj. We should open it up correctly. Yep, uh, that looks good. And then you'll see at the top, it's fetching Strata iOS. Oh, I haven't even used Strata yet. I'm kind of excited to do that. So this will be cool to see. Try to do like just a quick overview of what the demo app includes. So we have an app delegate. Uh, there's not really too much going on here. We have a scene controller, which it looks like the scene controller is what's going to be setting up all of the like the navigation controller that we've looked at before. And there's also a turbo nav controller, which is essentially just the same thing as the navigation controller. I don't know why we're doing it like this, but okay. Prompt for authentication, which would just redirect the user to the sign in page. And we also have a session, a modal session, kind of like a lot of stuff going on here. A lot of error catching and a lot of different logic too. We also have the turbo web view controller. It just also has some stuff that's going on setting the background for the view so this is where it would actually be getting like the web view and adding some things there's a bridge delegate which this is part of strata and you'll see on each of these callbacks we're calling the bridge delegate we have a number of view controllers so this is a fully native view that we'd switch over we have an error presenter which would also be a fully native error screen we also have a path configuration which would decide which patterns would go to which thing. So for like example, new, edit, sign in, these would go in the modal. And then for numbers, it would actually do a custom view controller numbers. So these would switch, it wouldn't use the default turbo web view controller, it would actually switch it to the numbers view controller. Let's see what else they have, navigation. So they have a turbo navigation controller. It looks like they're adding some more stuff on top of the UI navigation controller. Make view controller. Oh, properties. Ah, so like essentially when you would do something, when it would be like this pattern, it would append these properties and properties are basically like params that you can check to see they're checking properties view controller and then they're doing like a case statement. Let's look at the other thing, strata inside of here, bridge component app. And then we have form component, menu component. Not really sure what's going on. So on receive, oh, I guess we're waiting for a message. Bridge component to display a submit button in the native toolbar, which will submit the form on the page when tapped. Ah, that's cool. So we're taking a button from the page and then converting it over into a native button. That's very cool. We also have menu component, display a native bottom sheet menu. Which will send the selected index of the tap menu item back to the web. Oh, that's cool. And I guess it's a, with Strata, it's as simple as just saying reply to this with this message. Uh, I'm definitely gonna have to mess with this. This is awesome. But yeah, I'm not mad at the, there's like so much going on in this demo. It's kind of crazy. Okay, let's check out web. Web view configuration. Ah, so this is where they're setting up the configuration to include a user agent. And then the Strata substring, I don't even know what that is. Now I'm gonna go and try to start the demo. We're just going to press play and start this demo right up. Just go in and take a look at this app and then I'll try to explain what's happening in Turbo and maybe like what things are using Strata and whatnot. So let's start at the top with basic features. So the first one is navigate to another web page. When we click on it, we go to the new page and you'll see we also get that back button thing like we did in the last video. And then we can test out the different actions. So the advanced action 
I think it just adds like a new history, I think. And then you can go back to the previous screen by touching the back button. Okay. And then there's a replace. So when I click replace, it looks like, oh, now the back button is still the original back button. Interesting. This performs a replace visit to the current page. So we can refresh too. Interesting. So obviously nothing's happening. But apparently it says that it is refreshing, which is interesting why it doesn't change the scroll position. And then the program, this programically refreshes the current page. Okay, refresh programmatically. And it says it's using morphing. So I guess that's why, oh, ref refreshing its content with morphing. That's why when we click it, we can see over here, it was actually making a new request, but because it's morphing, it still persists to the scroll position. Very exciting. All right, now we'll check out open a slow loading web page. So when I click on this, oh, it takes a while. It's like loading slowly with the loader. And it says the page is rendered with a delay on the server so you can see the loading indicator and test Turbo's preview cache. So to see the preview cache, tap the back button, then return. Interesting. Oh, that's cool. So I wonder how it does that. Did you see that? There was actually a request here. So I guess what's happening is when you go and open a slow loading web page, it uses the cache and then it must morph. Like it must look, it eventually loads and then it must morph it if there's any differences. That is beautiful. So these are all things I'm gonna have to try out very soon for videos. I'm getting really excited just checking this out. The next thing is try turbo scroll restoration. So scroll down a bit, then tap a link to navigate. So we're like, we're reading this. Uh, let's see, scroll to the bottom. That was cool. Uh, we can just click one of these, navigate to another screen. And then go back. And it's still in the same scroll position. That's crazy. Wow. So I guess that's just already there by default. Interesting. The next thing is hit an HTTP 404 error. So when we click on this, we get this error loading page. There was an HTTP error. And I'm pretty sure this is a native error page. The way that we can test this is we can actually go in here to the error thing, like the error class. Where is it? Oh, error presenter. Come in here and we should be able to see that text the error loading page. If we did want to customize this, this could be your first uh, code that you're, that you're doing on iOS. If you don't know, have any idea what you're doing, why don't you just come in here and start messing with the demo app? It's not gonna hurt anything because it's lo just local. So what if I just put the text as, hello YouTube, error by the way. <laughs> and then I press play. And then we're gonna hit the error again. And look at that, it's my own text. Hello YouTube, error. That's so cool. I'm also wondering how they got the 404 error because I remember I was trying to do something with errors and I was trying to ask about the status number, but I wasn't able to get it. So interesting. I guess that's the body label text is the localized description. Apparently that includes the error code too. This is another thing I'm gonna have to mess around with on my new apps. Retry, it's gonna just try it again. And you'll see it has our message there. So that's awesome. That was just the basic features guys. That's crazy that all of those awesome features were just basic. And I am i don't know if they have that in React Native. They probably do, but it's probably not as baked in as these features. That's just beautiful. And next we have advanced features. So the first one is intercept unauthorized access. Interesting. So it actually did a sign in. What's your name? Indigo Tech. Sign in. Hey, Indigo Tech. What is this? Intercept unauthorized access. Can we try to find that in the code? Somewhere in here. Screen controller. Could probably just do like a control F and just search for unauthorized. Maybe like auth. Oh, we do have something. Prompt for authentication. So auth URL is sign in. And we're going to redirect them to the sign in page, which should pop in in a modal. Because if we go back to the path configuration file, you'll notice that sign in is one of the URLs that would get sent to the modal presentation. I just want to find out where they're intercepting it. This is where they're defining the path configuration with extension JSON. So it's going to look for that file right there. It looks like this is where they're presenting the error is in this session. So in Swift, there's always like there's methods with the same name, 
but they're different based on the parameters that are sent in. It's kind of an interesting concept. Like they don't have this in Ruby, but you have the same name method, but then it's it goes to the right one based on the parameter. So this one is expecting error. So it would go to this one. And then we have a check if turbo error, case let this status code equals 401. Oh, so if it's 401, they prompt for authentication. The prompt for authentication would be, is that the, isn't that the method we just looked up? Yep, up here. So I guess that's what happens right here is when you make a request, it returns a 401. That's what makes you have to sign in. Oh, actually, I just noticed something weird. Look, when you press done, it actually still shows like an empty screen. That might be something we want to fix. All right, so let's keep going. Let's go to the next one, intercept with a native view. This one's very exciting because it allows you to switch between a Rails backend with a fully native view. That's beautiful. So we can intercept. So now what we're looking at is all native. I guess there's just a bunch of rows. If we click on one of them, it pops up a native alert that just shows which number we clicked on. Now, obviously this is a pretty boring and simple example, but it shows you the possibilities that you can have your full app and then switch over to a native view where you do like touch gestures, swipe slides. You can go crazy with anything that you could do in Xcode. So let's take a look at how that's working. So if we go back to the scene controller, uh, we're just gonna look, actually it's, it all comes from the path configuration, if we're gonna be real. Inside of here, we have these patterns for the modal up here. Remember new, edit, sign in, strata forms, which we haven't even got to strata yet, I'm excited. But then also we have the numbers. So whenever you go to a numbers URL, it's actually gonna add the property of view controller numbers. Now, I don't think that this alone switches out the view controller. I think I saw some code inside the scene controller that does this. So let's just look for that. Uh, you'll see right here is where we're, create, we're setting the path configuration to this variable. And then we'll actually use that to determine some things later on. So maybe not scene controller, I think it might be in the navigation controller. So if we go up here, uh, we could just take a look. Uh, right here, we have this method called make view controller. And it says, if the view controller equals properties view controller as string, then they do a case statement. So if there's numbers, then we do, we get this numbers view controller. We set the URL to URL, and then we just return this view controller. Otherwise, if it's a numbers detail, then we create a, we use native code to create a UI alert controller with a title and a message. We also add an action and knit. Okay. The handler is nil, which is kind of interesting because actually what happens when you click, okay. Okay. I guess it doesn't do anything. It just closes and then it returns the alert controller. Otherwise, I guess it just does like a failure, which I'm not sure. How does that? default there must be more code in here that's determining that so let's look for make view controller let's see where else we're using it so we're doing it up here let view controller equals make view controller create view controller appropriate for url and properties oh i see i see i see right here look we're doing this if statement but then at the end we're returning turbo view controller as the default so forget about this assertion I don't think it's, this assertion failure is really doing anything. Like it's not holding up anything. Like it, like maybe a failure would do in a Rails app. So I guess I was thinking about that wrong. But anyways, the logic is right here, which is interesting. I wonder if you have to do this to set the right view controller. It looks like maybe we have to, but I want to experiment that with this in my own custom Turbo iOS apps. But yeah. Anyways, this is how it's working. So if we want to take a look at the numbers view controller, let's just find it. It's right over here. Go inside of here. And it's just a class uh, that inherits from UI table view controller. That's what gives it the styling. So the table view is just like a table like this with a bunch of items. Inside of here, there's different methods that relate to the table. So we set the title be here at the top of the page. And then it looks like we're registering table cell, which I guess is just like setting up this, this row. We have number of sections, one table view, a hundred. And finally, we have the method table view, just creating a cell 
let number equals this cell text label that's weird code doesn't make sense to me number of sections is one so what happens if we turn this to five that's what i'm kind of confused about like let's say we change table view too but let's let's try it with five first we'll go back to this page oh look at that so I guess there's, these are the rows, but then the sections is just how many times it does the row. Though there's no like obvious split between them. This kind of goes over. Okay, so what if we just say five sections, five each? Let's restart the demo and go back to the native view. All right, now we just have rows one through five, but then we have it displayed five times. But this is obviously just something that's part of this table view that we're inheriting from. So if you know how that works in iOS, which I have no idea, that's why I'm experimenting. And then we're saying cell equals DQ reusable cell with identifier cell. Like, I don't know what that means, but when you don't know what something means, just search it up. Well, the developer docs don't really make sense because they don't have images. I'm definitely a visual person. UI table view cell with the associated identifier. Imagine if it wasn't numbers, but this was like contact information or something. It might look a little bit different. So how could we do that? We're right here when we're setting the cell. Why don't we just say, contact that and then we'll just put like a default number by the way this is fully native so you can really go crazy with all the native stuff that you love to use and then we can figure out a way to pass it back to the server when we're at that point which that's actually the point of strata which we haven't got to yet but we will get there in one second so let's go back to the native view now you could kind of see like a contact list and it still just says like, okay, the number. I kind of want to pass that phone number as the thing that displays. So yeah, see right here, it's actually using alert controller equals this. Message is url.lastpath. I'm guessing this means just taking something from the URL. We go back to numbers view controller. Are we setting a URL? Oh, right here. Turbo nav controller push URL dot appending path component row plus one. Ah, and this, check out. Uh, did select row at this is the method that gets called whenever you click on one of these items And then we're just pushing this URL with this path for the index row What if we didn't want to have the row but we wanted the phone number? Well, I'll show you how we could do that So let's just take this phone number and let's put it into a variable at the top like URL Say var phone number equals just this string now we should be able to use this all around. So if we came down to this one for the contact number, so the number is just the index. And if we do another interpolation, just put phone number, it'll show the phone number. And I'll put a dash to separate it. Then also here, when we're adding to the URL, why don't we put the phone number instead of the index? And we click on a contact number. Well, <laughs> we get an error. Oh, that was unexpected. What happens? It doesn't like my numbers with my whole number thing, apparently. JavaScript fail visit it for, yeah, fail visit. Why? Oh, is it because of this? Look how we have this other thing that's checking patterns numbers zero through nine. We are gonna have to use a different regex. So go back to the GitHub, go to docs, and then path configuration. And let's just try to read through this real quick. Well, not the whole thing. I'm just gonna try to find out what I need to know, like the patterns. I need to learn more about the patterns. Five hours later. Oh, the slash character Swift interprets as an escape. See that that's literally it. Whenever you try to do a slash, it's not work. Oh, it says within double quotes, a single backslash will be rated as an escape sequence. You need to escape all the backslashes one more time in order to consider it as a regex backslash character. I believe this how it is. What if we try to escape that one more time? Do a double slash. Hey, the modal works. Intercept in the native view. It works. Okay, so perfect. So I, I'm able to use my regex. I just need to escape the backslash. Which, wow. I've been here for like probably an hour recording just trying to figure that out and yeah i really wish it was right inside of here 